Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wednesday Call Live! Filmed in front of a live studio audience in beautiful Burlington, North Carolina. And now, fresh back from Africa, let's hear it for our CEO, Andy Over! Good to be back. Good to be here. Yeah. Good to have you Looking back. Forward to saying hello to some of you guys. I got a game plan for today, and um, hope it's worth your time to listen in here for a little bit. We'll see. We'll know. <laughs> I got a list of people here. We got. Hey, so I've been uh, out of town. Me and my son are doing some conservation work in Africa. <laughs> And um, it was fun. All righty then. Pop the pictures up, Billy. I'm going to tell you the truth. That's a leopard. I didn't know that there was still them in the, in the world. There was a bunch of them. They were everywhere. Next, Billy, see what's up. We ate good. Hold on, back up, Billy. Yeah, we ate good. Oh my God. That's called tripe. You can look it up. It's um, buffalo. Um, and so, if any of y'all are familiar with chitlins, um, it's not chitlins. But it's close. Um, Y'all know uh, uh, Cape buffalo has a boss, and then the antlers that go out like that right there. That is the. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the stomach of one, but they're, they're like that big around and it's like that thick. The, the lining is that thick. Um, that's what that is right there. It's called tripe. Uh huh. <laughs> Next. Another beauty. These, these creatures are beautiful. All right. A leopard. I don't know who that is. Let's go. <laughs> so um, this guy fought in the war. You know, you've never heard of the road to Rhodesia? You know, Rhodesia, that is, um, that's a cool movie. Uh, Rhodesia is now in Zimbabwe. He fought in that war for 15 years, and um, he now lives in South Africa. He's, um, he's an expert. And this is my son, Spencer, and this is where we, every single night, for 10 nights, we were out there hanging out, telling stories about how we almost died conserving an animal. <laughs> All right, next. <nice. laughs> this is my team. Um, I have never... Um, um, Philip, Odie, um, this is Nicholas, um, I called him Saint, um, God, I knew he's, I know this guy's good as everything, Pardon. but um, you talk, I've, I've been hanging out with Philip for Pardon. four years, what's that? Pardon, 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 is... P-A-R, Pardon, Pardon, Obi, Philip, Nicholas, and there's one more, oh, Million, Million. The tall one is Megan. That joker could see through walls, see through trees, see through mountains. All right, next. I'm not kidding you. It's miraculous. Um, another, another professional dude right here that helped us out a lot. This is us every night sitting around and say, kick these fire. This is um, Papani Wood that's doing these crazy sparks. Next, Billy. I bet I saw 300 elephants. Um, Billy was um, Billy was in close Billy that was talking sounds like God but it's not God's Billy. <laughs> we come around the corner, Mia. We were going through. Um, we it was rough country, bush. Um, straw a little bit higher, a little bit higher than this right here, and so so close that you couldn't see two feet past it. So we're going down the road and it's on each side, and we come around. There is a mama. Elephant. The reason you know it's a mama elephant is because she's going nah! Nah! like that, and her ears are coming out, and her eyes are real big, going nah! and then coming at the truck. 
And, um, and my guy goes, so we're backing up, backing up. So we're backing up, and he's doing a mirror thing because, I mean, it's a creepy path. And, um, and then a little baby come out about that high. I've never seen an elephant that little in my life. Couldn't have been a week old. Um, so we had some ex- harrowing experiences. Beautiful giraffes. They're one of the biggest, most amazing creatures. Um, vultures. taking They're clean up. That's the clean up crew. Um, <laughs> eagles. Eagles everywhere. More giraffes. I mean, we're talking, if it looks like it's 30 feet away, it's 30 feet away. Yeah. We were not in the stay still, um, you know, you might get hurt. We were in a get your stuff, let's go <laughs> group. We want to get closer. Everybody wanted to get closer, um, except for female elephants. You don't want to get closer to a female <laughs> elephant. It turns out that, what's up, dude? It turns out that the females in um, Africa are just as frightening as the females in America. <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just telling you. Apparently, it's a cross-cultural thing. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's a female. That's another frightening one. That's a lioness. All right, Billy. Oh, every night. So this is the Milky Way, and when you can capture the Mickey, Milky Way in a picture, you know how hard it is to grab? Every night, it looked like daylight. It was The stars were so bright out there because they got, well, they got no power, so they don't have a problem with lights distracting you. They only have power five hours a day in Zimbabwe right now. It's not a good thing in, in the big cities. Where we are, we were working on, um, we were working on um, generator. We had no power. We're, we're way out in the woods. All right, that's a beautiful setting. We got so many pictures of that stuff like that. Again, this is where we were every night, and um, I mean, it's lions, leopards, um, zebras. Uh, uh, what do you call the hog things, Billy? Those warthogs. No, 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 no hippos here. Um, yeah, go on. That's my son eating out in the wilderness. I was not happy about what they did there, but um, dangerous. All right, Billy, this, that's what we do. We did a lot of walking, a lot of walking. We'd get off and go, are you back around? or go? Uh, every day what they do is we pack a crazy lunch because we were an hour and a half, two hours out in the bush, and so we'd just pick a pretty spot, and this is one of the pretty spots, and just throw down, and we'd have pork chops, applesauce, biscuits, yeah, every time you turn around, it's just something amazing. What's next? That's lunch. <laughs> they packed. It's just crazy. Um, all right, Billy. Every, you can't capture it, but there's, that's pretty close. That's pretty close catching it. Uh, this, is, this is actually a reenactment. Um, and this is not close because you could not see the truck if you were that far away. But I asked, I thought it was dense, and then got off, and I said, I ah, forget it. But that's the way we would ride around, looking over, looking at stuff. All right. Ah. Uh, what do you call that? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Safari shopping. Safari shopping. We eat good wherever we were. All right, Billy. New York City. I guess we're back home. All right, Bill, is that it? All right, y'all, that's pretty cool. Just where I've been, um, and, and I made a note of this to talk about. Somebody asked me this every week, and, and when I was in Africa, I got a, 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 a WhatsApp note, and it said, um, is it worth it? After all you go through, and most of you don't know, but here's the way it works. There's problems at every level. So you're experiencing problems. We know that. It's not a shock to us. I love it when people go like, my situation is different. And I always go, well, tell me about it. And I listen. I go, that is very unique. Um, and then... Um, you, what happens is, as you get bigger, you have bigger problems, more complicated problems, and where your highs are higher, your lows are lower a lot of times, 
and this guy knows it, and he says, is it worth it? And I said, yeah, oh, oh yeah, absolutely, dude. I mean, I just, I, I don't know how to express, like, I can't imagine having the little problems that people tell me about. They tell me about these problems, and I just, I want to just cry, like, you've not experienced a problem yet. And, and then I go like, and I don't know if you could handle that problem because you need to get over the small problem because there's great rewards. There's like first class seats, eating wherever you want to, traveling, cars, vehicles, um, helping people, making a difference, writing checks. It, but it's, it's worth it to me. It may not be for you, but um, you know, where you've gotten to in life, you've had to make sacrifices. Is it worth it? Like, look, it, it's just, um, do me something I can write on up here, Billy. You know, I'm a, talk, a writer when I'm a talker. Um, that's what I'm talking about right there. L let's, just, let's just say I'm here and um, I've got benefits and things, cars, travel. Um, you know... My, my wife's at the beach. She, she's, she was the whole time we were to Ocean. I mean, we're in Africa. She's at our beach home. And I told her, I said, I'm, I'm coming down Friday. So today's, today's Wednesday. I said, I'm coming down Friday. And she's like, well, I'm just going to stay if you come on Friday. And I go like, well, I think Spencer might want to come and bring his girlfriend. She says, well, Haley's coming. That's our daughter. And I was like, well, hey, why don't I just bring Brandon on a jet? And she says, well, I'll just stay down there. See, to me, having that conversation just freaks me out like people say do you ever like when you're riding on the plane just feel like you just can't believe it I go all the time I just can't believe it I mean like I'm like I'm like I'm gonna wake up to the longest dream that I've ever had and this is not real but then I go to sleep and I wake up and I go this is crazy I'm dreaming that I went to sleep and I wake up and then I go like this could possibly be happening to me this could possibly be happening to me so whatever I've got, cars, travel, houses, whatever, and then, but look at where you are and what you got. And we call this gratitude. Like, what do you have? Family, friends, opportunity, houses, cars, uh, food to eat. It, it's no different. It's just faster car, bigger house, better uh, location. But you've got it, a place to stay, unless you're homeless. And if you're homeless, what kind of car are you living in? You know, he's like, what is it like? Because I've seen people that wish they had a car they were living in. Or if you're staying with your parents, hey, your parents let you stay. Whatever the deal is, it starts with that gratitude. And you've had to sacrifice stuff to get there. I've had to sacrifice stuff to get here. It's no, do, you, do, you, do you think it's worth it or do you, or do you want to end it? Like, do you want to go back to when you had nothing, or do you want to end it? And I mean, I know there's people that end it. There's people that go like, I have no future, I have no, no, no chance, and they kill themselves. I'm like, I'm thinking, man, I got a shot here. Let's just everybody calm down. But so from where I am, where I want to be, because I don't compare myself to, to Burlington, North Carolina, and my friends here. You know, I mean, I got good friends here. Um, I got a, a guy you um, I want to I want to advertise downtown Burlington he owns the coffee the coffee bean or the coffee mug, and he's he also does a lot of my furniture sound and TVs, so he does his name's Jim Young. Well, he texted me today and said, "Hey man, I'm coming by. I've got keto friendly pound cake and blah blah blah." And I said, "I'm sitting right here in my office. Bring it on." He brought me a grocery bag of stuff and just set it on my desk, you know. And he's a wonderful guy, like got a great life. But if I compare myself to him, he ain't getting back from Africa. He ain't got to be, you know what I'm saying? He's like, I'm saying, what is, what, is it, what is this baseball player doing? What is this movie star doing? What is this guy doing? Like, like I'm looking to move up here. Yep. All I can tell you is what I dealt with to get to here. Right. And you know what you dealt with to get to here. And so I'm just, I'm just kind of, I'm the monkey, uh, since I just got back from Africa, I'm the baboon up in the tree. <laughs> I'm way up in the tree, I'm going, no, don't go over there, lion, <laughs> you need to come over here, papayas. You, you know what I mean? Like, like, just, like, does that make sense? Like, I'm the guy up in here screaming down, like I've been there, done that, and what I'm doing is screaming up to people saying, hey, how can I get... How can I get to here? Does that make sense? 
So it's been worth it to me. I would do it again. I'm looking for, I know this, it's bigger challenges to get to here and I'm dealing with them head on. Am I the greatest dealing with them? Not as good as I'm dealing with them. No problem. I got you. I, I know how to deal with that. As a matter of fact, I try to make it sound like, oh, you're going to have to do this. And, and I'm really thinking, boop, you know, boop, that's not a problem. And I'm kind of getting used to these problems, kind of. They still give me a hard time, but it's those problems that I know I'm going to have to deal with. Does that make sense? And, I, and I'm, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm not quitting. That's why I'm here. That's why I was, I, yesterday I scheduled a meeting. I had this meeting at 1230, right? So I scheduled a meeting from 12 to 1225 on the line with the president and vice president of an insurance company because I'm shooting for a deal for next August, July, July or August of next year. And I just want to make sure that we're getting organized for it because I want to attack bigger. And he, here's the reason, because... If this is the size of my company and this is the size of your company, if, if, you, are, if you are ever going to be that size, I've got to go to this size. If I don't figure out a way to get out of your way, you can't get me. And I can't just sit there and you expect you to get to be me. I have to get out of the way. So that's why I'm planning stuff out in, in August that I think, um, I think will help you get there. Um, I like it when Tim Goad and Jeff Bright talk about how he's, tra you, you say, hey, I like Andy, or I want Andy to know who I am. Andy, and they say Andy like results. Andy likes results. Listen to this. You don't have to love the hard work, but you have to crave the end result. Um, I'm, I'm not a look forward to workout person. I just want to be able to walk when I'm, when in this case I'm 55, to go to Africa and walk. I asked a guy, I said, he, he was, the, the professional was talking about these chairs. And he said, yeah, these things break and you take them back and you can't get them fixed. You know, it's just a red, old redneck talk, right? And I said, those chairs break. He said, you ought to see the size of some of my clients. I said, some big fat boy, he said, God Almighty, they rich as everything, but they weigh 400 pounds. He said, you put them on these chairs, it just breaks. He said, you have to get, you know, he said, this chair over here, we had this right here, works good with them fat boys. And, um, you know, because they're rich. Because people say, what's the biggest challenge about being rich? Not eating every single thing, every single meal, and every friggin' $200 bottle of wine. You cannot, I mean, I'm like, I can't drink it, but now I can afford it. I mean, like, I don't want to discourage you, but that's, it's a challenge. That's why I brought up keto again. My wife's just like, like, I don't like it. It's the end result. Does that make sense? I don't, like, I don't, and I, and I told him, I said, how do you, how do you get close to an elephant, one of the people, he said, you don't. He said, you just ride around and hope one's standing near the road. We walked one day, Spencer walked seven miles until dark and then 10 miles the next. And I've had days like that. We've, but it's, how did you like, my, in other words, I don't like exercise. When you see the gym out right here, it's the end result that I crave. The only thing right now is I'm going to be 60, right? And by the way, that guy, the, the professional leading the way, he's 70 some years old. I think he's 73. I know. Yeah, I know. I know. And I'm like, if I play it like that, I got 15 more years of just psychoness. You know? It's the end result. It, it's, it's, I don't know if I've loved every single, it's making phone calls. I talk to these kids, these young kids that are in their 19s and 20s and 25s, and they're like, I just, you know, don't make, like faking phone calls. So I was like, do you like getting up in the morning? Do you like, do you like the pain of lifting weights? And like, they got great biceps and great bodies, but their billfold is like tiny. Like, your little, your billfold needs some work. You, you know what I mean? You just need to work your billfold. Like, open it up and close it, open it up and close it, and open it and make your billfold grow. Congratulations. I mean, do you like this? <laughs> like, up, oh, damn. That's what my guy says. Up, oh, damn. Oh, you, that was awesome. 
I'm like, it's <laughs> awesome about lifting it up and setting it down. How do you get excited about that? I just want my arms to keep working. I don't want to freeze up like my fingers are doing. Okay. Oh, so um, things that you get to do. I do things now that I don't not dream. I, I was just, I got crazy culture. I just, I was texting with a friend that I can't imagine this. He's, he's got a place on the river close to where I was in Zimbabwe. And he said, hey, I'm taking off December 4th. Can you go with me? Oh, no, he said, I'm taking off December 4th, and I'm staying out there a few days. i got some work to do. The work that he wants to do, I want to help him with. I mean, he's got a challenge, and I'm willing to help him with a challenge. And I, so I pulled up my calendar. I'm texting with him, or what's happened with him, and I go to, and I, it turns out we're going to Forrester's at Toronto um, December 4th, 5th, and 6th. So this is a problem I have. I want to go with him but i got to go Toronto. Yeah. Now, in Toronto, back to the food thing. Taylor, my event planner person, girl, lady, we need to know we're going to eat on the 4th in January. Not in January, in December. December 4th. Okay, you're invited to go. Y'all know this, right? This is the top. What I do is I do keto, but when we take one of these trips, I eat-o. Okay? <laughs> All right? Okay. So July 21st, which is passed, until October 31st, we're running a contest. This is Foresters only. They give us, they, I, I talked them out of $50,000, and this is what I'm able to spend and get for it, okay? All right, here's what we're going to do. The top nine veterans, you can pull up the leaders if you want to, if you got it. The top nine veterans and the top three rookies. And the rookies is defined as agents that didn't start until January 1st, 2018. So you're the rookies, right? So if you just started, and then the top nine veterans, which is everybody else, and it's just Forrester's production, July 21st through October 31st, and then December 4th, we're flying up to Toronto, and we're going out to eat. And I'm going to tell you what, them Canadians, they can cook. I'm gonna and the main reason they can cook is people from all over the world come there. I mean, just, you know, you talk about a diverse crowd and it's great, great food. So right now, um, let me see a little more of this. Can you, maybe I can slide it up. Okay, there you go. So Debbie Ben is leading the way. Do you want me to do it? Debbie Ben is leading the way. Paul, uh, Paul Epstein is number two. Douglas B. on George Wilson's team. And if anybody's wondering who's got the full names, the agency managers will put their full name. Until you become an agency manager, we do your last name. Michael and Angie Owens, and uh, unless I know the names, that's Mac Judy, I'm sure. And so then um, we have our very own Mia Fennell right here. <laughs> Mia is, um, <laughs> let's see, so, so we would have, it's top three, so there's 12. Why is there only 11 people here? Okay, so you got Paul, Doug, Michael and Angie, Mac, Judy, Mia, Nathan C. under Fitzgerald, Jonathan, Megan, Jonathan Yegi, and Megan Alleman. I thought they were agency managers. Maybe they're not. Lee R., probably Ray S., Joe Dukes. Joe, you should go with us. And then Varey. Joe Dukes was telling me about them. And I'm thinking... There's 12, so I don't know why this one is not lit up yet. Because um, Teresa, I would Teresa, I think you're in the competition. Cameron Ashcroft, I bet. God, Cameron, you have a chance to win an all-expense-paid trip to Toronto. Damon, Christina. So I think the cutoff is 12. I'm not sure why that one is. Oh, wait. Why is that? Three rookies. Are you telling me all these people are rookies? These are rookies. So veterans, we only have a spot for three rookies. Okay. I wonder if I could change that rule, James, and just say, if the, hey, it's good to be king, right? If a rookie beats a veteran, we should not limit it. 
Okay, let's throw this up to the rules committee. <laughs> and see what they say. Because um, to me, we shouldn't let V. Kyle win if, if, if he's a veteran. Let me, let's throw this up. Let me run that by Foresters. I would say the odds are that rule is going to change. Yeah. Okay, y'all understand how this works. I am going to go up there. A lot of times people winning strips and they want to know if I'm going to be there. I'm, I'm asking Jane to go up there, but I hadn't given her the dates yet. So I'm, I, I was talking to her earlier and forgot to mention these dates. There's so much going on. But, um, and I'm taking my inner circle that's kind of the people that I'm kind of counseling or coaching right now are going to be there. So there's six other people. I can tell you who they are. It's um, Diane Lampy. You have a question or a point? I was going to tell you what it means. You're going to show me what, what it means. Or... So these are your vets, right? this is your rookies, and this is why this vet is your number 12. But what we're thinking is that if a rookie beats a veteran, we should change the rules. Oh. Does that make sense? Yeah. You were in transit when we like, had that. Yeah. You were in <laughs> Thank you, Tia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tia. I got great staff. They care. They care. Okay, so two nights. We'll get, so we'll get, first night, it'll just be dinner, chilling. Next day, we'll be all over Foresters, meeting, touring, the whole deal. And then a dinner the last night, and the next day, we'll take off. So it's a really cool trip, just to wait, get away. So it's December 4th, 5th, and 6th. So mark your calendars. It's only Foresters issue paid production, okay? All right, so that's one thing that you can win. You in? You going to step it up now? <laughs> step it up. Step it up. Step it up. We're giving away Rolexes, and um, I just, I, I was trying to think of something that'd be cool, like with nostalgia. I like Michael Owens, who you mentioned, mentioned he said, why don't you give away your watch? I was like, I don't want to get them that fired up. <laughs> I just want to get them kind of fired up. Right. So we're giving away five Rolex watches that were all built in 2002, which is when the Alliance was started. Right now, if we were to give away five watches, John C. or J.C. out of K.C. is what Adam Katz called him, K.C., J.C. Um, Sean Quinn Quigley, I think is his name, under Davies. I just did his President's Club thing. Um, A.C., matter of fact, if y'all want to change, there's a way, if you just ask President's Club how to change your name, we can change your name on the leaderboards. I know that's A.C. and Leticia. So if y'all want to change your name, just let us know what you want it to be called. Carolyn M., and Brant and Jail Swindale would be the five that get to watch right now. Mickey Cruz would barely miss it. We'll give him a sticker. Um, <laughs> Joe Dukes, you were on the other contest too. You would get a sticker, Debbie Ben. That shows you Debbie's writing a lot of Foresters. And Lewis R., Paul Epstein, who you saw earlier, Nathan C., Adam J., Paul and Sam. Seemed like to me Paul and Sam in Aquino should be their name written out because they're agency manager. So every time we have a new leaderboard, we got stuff we got to work out. But these are cool watches. And we're working on contests right now for 2020. Kind of crazy, but we're buying more Rolexes, more game plans. I've already got a really, really nice ladies watch that was built in 2002 that is three times nicer than any of these starting in January. So it's, this is not going to stop, people. It's not going to stop, all right? It's just, that's the first thing I want to talk to that president of that company this morning. He said, well, what's kind of, what's, I'm going to turn it over to you. What's the reason for this call? Why did you set this up? I said, I like what I'm doing, and I don't want to go backwards. I just want to keep doing it. He said, I got it, because this guy's crazy rich. And I was like, I know you don't worry about it, but I'm worried about it. I want to keep moving up. He's like, all right, I got it. So this is our game plan. All right, so Rolexes. Uh, what else? This Alaskan cruise is going on. Anybody can win it. We have record numbers of people that are on track to win it. Let's take a look and see what we've got here. Um, you only need 115,000 points. And Mark Hutchinson already has 275. He's leading the country. Brandon Bill, 267. Um, so let's see. What the, what's the math on it? We would need... How much would you need to be on track, James? This, we've already got 27 people has won it. So it's around 115,000. You need around 65,000. You wouldn't need quite 65,000. No, you, would, you would need 65,000 to be on track to win it. So let's look and see who we've got. Uh, 67,000. 67, 
So I thought we'd have more than that. So here's, top four, here's the top 50 people that are on track. And that is available on, I think this is posted on band. Is everybody on band? Do y'all know what band is? You can check it out. So all this is posted. You can so, see where you stand on it. Um, all right. Oh, 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 we already had some people, more people win it. We had 49. Where is my other people? Here they are. Already won it is uh, Katrina and Les Gustin. Congratulations. Um, Nick and Karen Narlis already won it. And Mac and Beati Judy have already won. All right, so getting crazy. Alaska Cruise, what else we got going on that we could win right now? Okay, there's money that you could win. Y'all understand that? I like money to win it because you can exchange it for anything. <laughs> Numbers seem to be going through the roof. Oh, here's my leaderboard, my big leaderboard. Let's see how we, if we figure out how many people down to 65,000 points. That's Foresters. Oh, you don't see who's winning the Foresters. That goes a little bit further down. And there's the Rolex a little bit further down. Let me see what that seven, seven, nine, eight, seven. Yeah, that's the latest one. I do not have, I do not have the cruise. I thought I had the cruise. Sorry, wish I had that for you. Okay, all right. I heard. Oh, Good Samaritan bonus. Do we have Good Samaritan bonus? Is that possible? Oh, let's do the um, the ten to people to the um, yeah power of ten. So we we send out T-shirts and um, books and other stuff. We've got our Amante Michael. Woo! Is he in here? Is that you? What's up, man? What I'm talking about Armante, uh, Michael W, Tyler P, and Kevin M, Chowett Ray's team, Eric and Bobby Belair, Ed Soto, and Stephen Davies team. So Stephen Davies team. It is. All right. Well, congratulations. Do we have GSB? Is that, I'm not sure if we have those. No. We do not. Okay. So Good Samaritan bonus. Good Samaritan bonus works like this. It's how much money you can win to give to other charities. And every single month, we look at the amount of production you're doing, and then we save this money up. And the one thing I would ask that we don't have a lot of is who you're giving this money to. Let us know. Let President's Club know who you want to give your money to because at the in January at our national convention, which by the way is close to selling out, if you hadn't got your ticket, get with your agency manager, we're going to give away hundreds of thousands of dollars to charities and you need to name the charity that you're going to give it to so you can get your mind right so you can start focusing on that. So I would ask you to, to let us know that. All right, um, Alaska GSB dates, I gave you that, December 4, 5, and 6. Uh, we have the dates for the Alaskan cruise, too. Let's get that out. Do you have them, Jane? They, we have them, so we need to, staff, y'all should let them, let, let everybody get the dates marked on our count. Everybody that's won the cruise, let them know what the dates are. What's that? 12th through the 19th. Of, uh, June. June 12th through 19th. Okay. That's going to be fun. I can't wait. Like, Oh, did you see on band where we're voting, where the contest is going to be for next year? Is it going to be Thai, Thailand, Maldives, Turks, Caicos? Y'all understand, I, I see this all the time on television. I see it on social media. People are like, it's not right in America. We people need an opportunity. I'm like, we have a failure to communicate. <laughs> because we're in America. Where are these people who need an opportunity? Right, right, right. Oh, so you found the Good Samaritan money. Like, we need to tell these people about it. Everybody deserves to have a decent life in America. I'm like, they need to get an insurance license is what they need to do. We should put this on TV. We have found the solution to your struggling in America problem. You know? God. Get your dad gum license, fool. <laughs> Traveling all over America. 
Is it not hard for you to comprehend? Like my, I mean, my children, I tell, they said, Daddy, I don't understand. I said, I don't, I can't, I don't get it. I don't get it. We got an opportunity. Now, maybe they hadn't found it, but we, we need to tell them. Um, so, okay, here it. If I can't read that. $250 GSB, actual number agents, July, $1,000. I didn't mean it was too small, Billy. So four people got $1,000, two people got $200, two people got $175. That's what that's telling us. I don't know who they are. Maybe it's down here. There we go. Here's who got the money. Mark Hutchinson got $250. Branton Jail got $250. John Courtney got $250. I bet that's the JC um, from Kansas City. And Mike and Michelle Alleman got $250. So if they do that every month, you know, $2,500, $3,000, we would give away in their name to whatever charity they pick. So uh, Robert Wilson, Sarge, pick it up, buddy, 200 Eugene Robbins, Sean Quigley. So all this is, you can, whoever's winning money for the Good Samaritan. Thank you, guys. So right now we're on set to give away, in July we did $11,700. Wow. And this is saying we could have done 19000 if everybody had done a little bit more. So all, we're in August. Let's see how much we can give away in August. Let's get it more than $11,000, okay? All right, Good Samaritan, dinner, Rolex watches. When you crave the end result so intensely that the work becomes irrelevant. Results, that's what I was talking about earlier is I like the end result. And I just, I understand that I'm not a doctor and I'm not an attorney. As a matter of fact, I was looking to hire an attorney, and I ran an advertisement, and I got a stack of resumes. You think all of them making money? I mean, I, I ran, it wasn't a high income either. I was like 50000 to like 100000 and I bet you I got 100 resumes that they either hate their job, hate their boss, or they ain't even making 50000 you know. And I'm going, so I don't get to call, tell my mommy I'm an attorney um, or a doctor or some kind of high sophisticated. I understand I'm an insurance agent. I got that. Okay, if you're trying to put me down, I got it. But the result, the way I get to live, is what I like. Does that make sense? So I'm an end result sort of a person. And if you can relate to that, we're on the same game. Okay? I understand that somebody told me they, what I don't, they tell me what I, they don't like. I don't like this and I don't like that. It's like if it was up to me, if I didn't do what I would like, I'd be one of those people you'd have to cut the door to get me out of the door. I'd be sitting there on a the couch. How big can a person get? 675 pounds, rolling all over the edge. I'd be like Doritos. I'd have a cup holder right there. I'd have a shelf right there. Give me a straw. If I did the only thing I like, you know what I mean? I, I don't I don't I don't understand this. I don't like recruiting. I don't like making phone calls. I don't like going to people's house. I don't I don't want to, uh, okay. All right. I got you. Do you like I mean I don't know. People. All right. Okay, so let's do this. This is happening really good. I posted this this girl named Darlene Ma, Ma, Mahini. Mawini, Mawini, Mahini, Mahini. That's it. Mahini. That's it. M A W H A. Mahini. Okay. She said, every time I go to a grocery store, I give away a business card. Do you know them? Dar Darlene and somebody. And they said, I give my business card every single time I go in there, and to, like when I'm checking out a grocery And this guy said, I'd be interested in that. And I was like, that's this business. You've got, we're fishing, not making people do stuff. All right, now, the other thing is we know the type of person that we want to do this, right? We want this Alliance Aiden, Alliance Alice. We're, look, we're not looking for Albright. Uh, and people get all offended on this. They go, like, you ain't, you're not describing me. You don't want me. All right, you're already in. You're already with us. We're not going to kick you out. Right. 
you know what I mean? Like you're in. But going forward, we know what we're looking for, right? So when you're in a grocery store or when you're in a music store or when you're at a gas station and you look around and you see choices and you see me standing there and you see her or you see him standing there, you go talk to them. Does that make sense? And you say, why is, I, I've been doing this for 20 some years, I'm telling you it's more predictable who's going to do this and who's not going to do this, okay? And I, I'm not going to get into that long list of, of trying to explain, I can explain it to you, but what we want is this poster of a person. If you hadn't seen the poster of who we're looking for, then you don't know who we're looking for. When you see the poster of who we're looking for, and then you know who we're looking for. So if you hadn't seen that poster, Check with your manager say, why haven't you given me the poster? And then they might say, well, I didn't want to offend you because you don't look like that person. You go like, I don't care what I look like. I want to know who we're trying to hire. That's right. Okay, so I want to talk to you about what to say to these people. It, and and I, I, I'm, I'm okay with the business card deal that this lady's doing. Mahini. Darlene Mahini, I like what she's doing with the business card. But what I'm telling you is, all you got to say to people is, excuse me, you look familiar. Now the way I do it, there's a lot of people that I don't know. I've got your, actually got your name here, so I, I could look it up, but I'm not looking at it. I just looked at it briefly. So, um, Amante, you, you, I know who you are, so it's good to meet you, right? Um, but I don't think I met you. You look familiar. Hannah Davenport. Hannah Davenport. And how are you connected to... Here. I am um, direct to Kyle Cater. Direct to Kyle Cater. Where are you from, Hannah? I'm from Lexington, North Carolina. Lexington. Okay. How did you meet? Oh, you know what? I should give you a mic. How did you, um, Hannah, how, how did you meet Kyle Cater? My name was on an agent list, um, and Amanda, my name was on an agent it's, list. Stand up. Stand up. My bad. You come up here too, Armante. Y'all come up here. Grab, grab that mic. Your name was on an agent list. Yes, and Amanda called me, and then it was history from there. Okay. Who, who were you working with? Northwestern Mutual. Okay. Do you have a college degree? I do not. You do not. High school degree? Yes. Did you go to any community college? I went to Western Carolina for a little while. What were you studying? Environmental science. Environmental science. Why do you laugh when you say environmental science? Um, it's just so different from... So different what I'm doing now. We don't, most colleges don't offer an insurance degree. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you got a college degree, Armante? Uh, I'm going into my last year. Where are you, where are you studying? I'm um, studying psychology and sports science. Okay, where are you studying at? Carolina. Sit back down. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd say that. I knew, I, you didn't know I what knew I was going to say. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. You knew it was going to be something, but you didn't know what I was going to say. Uh, hey, same thing, you know. <laughs> I wanted to go to state. Yeah. Wait, listen. <laughs> All right. So it, it works like this. If you see this guy standing somewhere, all you got to do is walk up to me and say, excuse me, sir, you look familiar. My name is Andy Albright. You just do just like that. What I like to do is give it the old, like, let me make sure you get this look. I'll be like. <laughs> you got to practice this. I've been doing 20 years. Actually, more than that, 27 years. Wait, I did it when I was, when I was in Amway. When I was, you know, I was meeting people, I'd be like. What's your name? I'm Nick, Nick. What's yours? You Andy familiar. Albright. Andy. He goes, look familiar. And they do it all the time, too, especially if you get that look down because they think you look familiar because you look like they look familiar. <laughs> and then you say, here's what you say, stuff to them. Say, I don't know where I know you from. Um, that you live, first thing you say is, now, do you live around here? And if they say, yeah, you go, ah, if you live there, so I live here all my life or I just moved here three years ago. And then it's just you keep looking at them and thinking. You know, you got to give them the old thinking. <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. This, I mean, you can look it up. Look up thinking. Picture. <laughs> Picture of thinking. That's got that guy in there doing this right here. Thinking. Thinking. 
So you, you hit them with that same. You think, I'm not kidding with you. You get really good at this. And you say, I'm thinking, and here's, here's some thoughts, okay? First of all, it's where do you work? That's a common one. Um, do you have a job? Do you work? Ma'am? No, I'm doing this full time. Do a little bit higher. Have you ever had a job? Oh, yes. Where have you worked? I used to work at uh, Frito-Lay, stacking chips, okay. stuff like that. Now, were you in one location, or were you traveling around on a truck? Uh, I was at one location. I was in a warehouse. Where, oh, he's in a warehouse? Yes, sir. Okay, so it wasn't like retail or nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you didn't meet him in a warehouse because it was. See, see how I'm thinking this through? Um, well, I could say, well, where do you go to school? Carolina. Okay. Do you go to the ball games? <laughs> Sometimes. Football, basketball, football, all of them. Football and basketball. I go to all the football games. I, I'm always there, so I could have run into you at a basketball game. I mean, a football game. See how that works? Mm-hmm. Me and him cross paths. I, went, I go to NC State and I go to all the ball games. I've got, I'm on the field at all the games at NC State. Um, hmm. I'm, I'm not on the field. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you know, he could say, you know, I work on it. I could work there. He could say I was an athlete. You just, I, I'm just, I just talking to the guy. Does that make sense? Now, um, so he's Frito Lay at Carolina. Do you go to church at all? Yes. Where do you go to church? Uh, I go to church at Rehab Christian Center. So. Rehab is that in Chapel Hill? No, it's in uh, Greensboro. Greensboro. So you're going back and forth from Greensboro to Chapel yes, Hill? Yes, sir. See, what I'm, see how I'm thinking this through? Mm-hmm. We could have met. Now watch. If we're at a gas station in Burlington, we could have met before him going to Greensboro. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? All I'm trying to do is figure out where is it possible we could have met. You said Lexington? Yes, sir. Lexington. Now, have you had a job in Lexington? Um, not in Lexington. I've worked... Other places. Like where? Texas Roadhouse. Um, Is that where they get the peanuts? Mm hmm. Throw them on the floor? Yep. Is that annoying to it you? It is so annoying. <laughs> so annoying. When they dump it like underneath the table and then refill it, that's the most worst. Yes. How does the, I don't know how the health department gets. I don't either, to be honest. It's okay. Nasty. So I like Texas Roadhouse and the peanut thing. What city were you doing that in? Winston Salem. Winston Salem. So my wife. But the, probably the timing on that, she went to cancer treatment when she had cancer there at the um, Baptist, mm-hmm. right? Yes, sir. And so we could have crossed paths there, but probably the timing, because that would probably been before she worked there. But I'm thinking how we could have connected. Is this making sense? Yeah. You'll be shocked. She probably knows a guy that knows me or a girl that knows me, right? And you said, well, Kyle Cater. And... Amanda. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying, I'm telling you there's another person that she knows that knows me. We're not that far apart. At the most, there's a guy that she knows who knows a person who knows me good. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? And if we could figure out who that person is, it's almost like you got instant trust. Right. This, I'm, I've been doing this a long time. It's just, so um, it's the same thing with Armand, Armante. Mm-hmm. He knows somebody who knows me. I will bet you he knows somebody that knows me or somebody that knows who I am. Does that make sense? So the question is, so where do you work? Where have you worked? Where do you go to school? Um, where do you go to church? Those are the, the easiest places. And then if they say, well, I don't work here, where do you work? You're tracking down what's their path because we're trying to keep in mind we're not – we're not trying to recruit them. We're trying to figure out how we're connected and how we know each other because they look familiar. Does that make sense? Okay, well, here, here's the biggest problem I find when people are booking appointments. This is you, and this is the person who picks up the phone. Okay? You are trying to figure out when they're going to be at home. Does that make sense? You're trying to figure out when I get home. What I find most people try to find out, they're trying to find out if this person is interested in writing a check and buying insurance. Does that make sense? That's a huge mistake. All you want to know is when they want to get we're going to be at home. Because you've got to figure that out, you've got to sort that out. People struggle with this. When you meet a person, when you meet a person at a gas station or at the grocery store, you want to find out how y'all are connected, how y'all know each other, not 
if they're interested in selling insurance with us or getting in business with us. Now, if you find out, it's simple. If you find out what kind of work they do or school they do, you say, what are you, what are you studying? Do you want to know what you want to do? If they work there, you go, that's a great place to work. That's a great place to work. And if they go, no, it's not, then I go, what would you like to do? You see how this is like, I'm kind of like a detective working this thing out. Um, and then it's just, I, I know somebody, I don't have my phone, I know somebody who's hiring in that area. Let me do this. Let me call you. Let me call your number, and I go to this number, okay? I don't know if y'all have seen this one on your phone. <laughs> show, let me show y'all this one on the phone. <laughs> this is where you don't know the person you're calling. I don't know if y'all have ever seen that channel. Because right. <laughs> most of y'all call people you already know, and right. you don't call people you don't know. Right. 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 Chicken. <laughs> You know, when you little, they say name calling don't work. I have found that it does. <laughs> and Trump has not helped the situation. <laughs> He's made me worse. He's made me a worse person. <laughs> chicken. Bah! <laughs> little chicken person. <laughs> okay, so you go to this page of your phone. And you say to them, I know somebody, I will turn them on to you, you can call them up. And what's your number? Punch it in. Or, I can dial it in because it's big numbers here. If you go to the contact page, that's different. Look, look how like if you want to add somebody, cancel, add. Look how little the stuff is that you have to press. And you got their whole name to put in there. You see what I'm saying? This is not good. Now, I have done that and just hand it to them and let them fill it all out, but that's a little more of a risk. You're better off going to the keypad and say, let me call you. And then you just 336, da, 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 and hit their number. Say, dial your number and just dial it. And then you end it. And then you say, now tell me your name again. Hannah, Hannah this is, and then you just talk text it. Hannah, this is Andy Albright. I will get your name to Mike, um, Mike Hartlieb, and he'll get in touch with you. Okay, I have been recruiting like this so much. I, matter of fact, partly, I got in an Uber. Guy was, I was like, how'd you become an Uber driver? He said, I'm not an Uber driver. I was like, well, you are today. And he was like, I'm a chef, and I'm a caterer. I came down here, blah, blah, blah. I was like, well, what do you want to do? He said, I want to move back up north. I said, why don't you? He said, I run out of money. I can't figure out how to get back. I'm trying to, I said, well, can you just drive back? And he's like, yeah, but I got to pay for this. And I got to pay for that. I said, I got a guy that can help you. He's hiring down here. He knows everybody. I hooked him up with Mark Hartley. He got his license, started selling like crazy, moved back up to Pennsylvania. And the last time I was down there, I was texting him. I, hey, buddy, I can't remember your name. Um, Hartley, shoot me his text, his name, and I'll call his name. But Hartley got him license started. I was in... What was I doing? I was in Bed Bath & Beyond for some dead gum reason. Um, <laughs> I know, we was at the beach, and my, Jane wanted to stay on the beach, and I was like, I'll go get the stuff for cooking. It was cooking stuff, and I like to cook, so I was like, all right, I'm going to go to bed. And I'm in there, and Jane wanted me to save money, and I am not a save money person. But, <laughs> but Jane wanted me to save money, so I had to use her coupon, and it didn't work. <laughs> So then she had to take me to a different cashier. Well, now I'm getting mad, but I seem like I'm patient. And so while we're waiting for the computer and I'm waiting for Jane, I go like, hey, how come you work here? Like, I know it's a nice place. It's air conditioned. It's hot as heck outside. And she was like, get me out of here. <laughs> That's what she said. Get me out of here. <laughs> okay, so watch this. Mike Hartlip, his name is Randy, and then Krista is, um, I gave Krista to um, Lua Body. Lua just, Krista, her name was Krista. And I said, Krista, dial, press your number in here. And she did. And then I talked to her, and then Lua Body got her in class, and she's selling insurance down there. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's cool. But you got, I found out who they are, 
and why they're there. And, and if a person is like, man, my dream is to do... Um, <laughs> People's like, it's hard to imagine you in Bed Bath & Beyond. I was like, you should see me in Bed Bath & Beyond. I'm supposed to be using a coupon, and I can't get a coupon. I'm about to scream. I'm not a patient person. She said, like, you're a patient. I said, I am not patient. I am being nice. So, but you see how this works? So you go to the con, you let them dial it in, and you say, I will connect you with the other person. Okay, you say, what if I want to connect them? Well, I, I could have called her, I, I, I could have said, Mike, Mike, I, Mike, if I said, Mike, I want you to help me recruit this person. He would have said, look, you're right there with Andy Albright. Let me tell you, I live down here, but he's going to put you in class. Does that make sense? Like, I, I, I just, it's not, it's not any different if I'm recruiting them. Um, but the guy that put in my ADT system at my house at the beach, you know, I recruited him. I didn't give him to anybody else. But just the point is, one person, one person can change your business when you get the right person. But we can't walk by these people. We got to start. And I, and I and I understand if you don't know how to do it. But the biggest thing is, you do look familiar. I know you. I know you from here. It's Nick, right? And you look familiar to me. You look familiar. It turns out you're Sam. And you look familiar, and you look familiar, and Debbie ain't no Debbie. You look familiar, and you look familiar, and I know you look familiar. You look familiar. You look. Matter of fact, I thought you were somebody else. You know, did you see me a while ago when I said, "Oh, hey, you know, I thought you, I thought you were exactly, yeah, right, right." Look, look, look. Stand up. I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding. You. I'll tell you who I thought you were. Stand up. What, what's your name? Let me make sure you're not. Sean. Huh? Sean. So it's just Sean with a C. Look, guess who I thought it was? I thought it was Sean. <laughs> I mean, when I saw him, I thought it was like Sean Boone. I was like, that's Sean Boone and come up here to see me, man. But it turns out it's Chon. How you say it? Chon. Do you mic? Right. Use the mic. Chon. Chon. Like okay. Asian. How you spell it? C-H-A-W-N. So if I'd have said, man, you look familiar, my name's Andy Albright. What's yours? Uh, Chon. Chon Brace. I know it's hard to do both, but Yeah, it's like... Chon. Who hired Chon? Brace. Um... I just got my license in. I think I'm going to go with this company. I don't know what team I'm going to be on. Well, I don't know. I'm not you? good with names. Who so invited you? Point at it. It's in my phone. Are you good at pointing? They're not here right now. But I Where can do, what city do they live? The city? I, I'm, I'm, I don't even know. Let me see. Let me see, sir. It's a, it's a, Calif it's a California number. California number. Yeah. Here's my text messages here. Let's see here. Yeah. Not for now. Corporate office name, Sean. Let's just call them up and see who they are. <laughs> I don't know who it is. Let's see who it is. Put your mic down now. We're going to see who it is. Okay. We're going to see who it is. <laughs> You'll never know. But this is the way I am if I meet them in a grocery store or as an Uber driver. I just start talking, take the phone away from them, call them up, just, you know, whatever. You could be on TWC if you pick up. <laughs> yeah, let's listen to voicemail. I hope it's our company. Some other company doesn't send him over here. Hush. It's Evan Patzer. <laughs> it is a California number. Thank you. Everybody knows Patzer. All right. Okay, I'm all right, I'm well, now. he pats us a good guy. All right, so, um, but see, so what kind of work you do? Uh, I create, con like, uh, a lot of content creation stuff, multimedia, like, this, that's right up my alley, like, the whole production thing. Yeah, you do all that I love stuff. It. But I just got what my license, so I'm trying to do it. I do it for myself for the most part. I work with a lot of, like, motivational speakers. Where do you live? Charlotte, I drove up here from Charlotte today. Charlotte, North Carolina? Mm -hmm. You ever heard of a guy named Steve Furtick? Steve there? Furtick, uh, the Elevation. Yeah, Elevation mm -hmm. Church. I listen to his audios all the time. You know him? Nope. Mm -mm. Um, yeah, Not I thought you Sean Boone. It's a buddy of mine. He played football at NC State. Was he Where'd good? You? He's awesome. Played four-year scholarship. I uh, thought he was going to play pro, but it didn't work out. Um, but he's killing it with us. He's selling like crazy. Um, but did you, go to, did you go to school down in Charlotte? Yes. Where did you go to school? Uh, Carolina School of Broadcast. Carolina School of Broadcast. You ever uh, bring you? After high school, Olympic high school, and then. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down there every once in a while on business. I don't know. We down. I've been down there with Kevin Keats recruiting Keats. at high school. Um, I don't know why. Well, you look familiar. And then I'd pull out my phone and I go, look, I know some people in broadcasting. 
Really? And uh, we're always hiring. <laughs> we're always hiring. And I just be like, how about just do your, tap your number in there. Go ahead and tap it in there. Really do it. Is that it? Is that no, right? No, the first 336, that's not it. That don't look so right. Do it again. Album, I got you. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, I need a, Yeah, so what I do is call them up, and then I talk text. I said, this is Andy Albright. Nice to meet you, Chon. If I can do anything for you, I'll let you know if I run in touch with somebody, right? And then I could call them up, and I could say, look, man, I've checked around. Um, I don't have anybody right now, but I got an idea. Um, I got this insurance deal that you could do until that works out. And then he would say, I already got my license. <laughs> See, if you'd have met him somewhere, he's already got his license, right? Why did you, who talked you into getting your license? Why'd you do it? Well, Keep using that mic. I was looking for it like a like career working, change. But it works for the people out there. I was looking for like some guaranteed money. As like an entrepreneur, like sometimes your clients could be few and far between. And I was like real broke. So I was like, I still got to pay for stuff. And I think life insurance could be pretty solid. We got a lot of artists. We got a lot of artists that work with us that they like to draw, they like to do media, um, different things. This is just a, a vehicle to get to do what you want. That's what we found. I like it. I, this is something I feel like I could do for a long time, too, because I know a few people with their license that, let's like, say they may you know, pursue it part-time, you know, write policies part-time, but mm -hmm. they're still going to keep it you know, refreshed throughout the year, like forever. You know? mm -hmm. So I could see me being one of those people. Mm -hmm. Y'all see how I'm doing this? You see how I'm doing this? This is just what I do. Now, listen, it's, it's easier in here because everybody's positive. And if you're out there in the world, you're going to get, somebody's going to call you stupid. Somebody's going to blow you off and not want to talk to you. It, it, you got to understand, like, I know that's going to happen. I'm just telling you that is part of the, you don't have to love it. You just got to want the result so bad that you don't care what anybody says. It's, you, just, you just can't. It's, it is, it's just the most, it's the most polishing business that I know it. I mean, it's going to knock the chips off of you, and it's going to knock the rough edges off of you because you're going to get the crap beat out of you and the stuff chopped off of you. And then people say, like, well, that scares me. I'm like, I understand it scares me too, but it's not, they're not going to eat you. They're just going to talk trash to you. Does that make sense? It's not like football where they're trying to rip your head off. They're just, does that make sense? You look familiar. What's your name? Mort Sedwick. Mort? Mort's M-O-R-T-S. M-O-R-T-S. Nice yeah. to meet you. Who invited you out, Mort? She can grab a street. Uh, right there, Lori. How do you know Lori? Uh, I met her, I met Lori through... Uh, Kenny, my brother-in-law here is this in Kenny? Virginia Beach. Hey, yeah. Kenny. Andy Albright. Good to see you. Yeah. How do y'all know? Kenny, let's pass a... Oops. Pass a mic. Kenny, how do you know Lori? Uh, she's friends with my wife. Oh, okay. So somebody you know somebody. She's in the business, right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, our upline. Well, she's an awesome person to be working with. and um, She's great. She is great. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. <laughs> We spent the night, spent the evening on annuities last night, right? Did you? Yes, indeed. Yeah, Training. Yes, indeed. She's good at it. It'll be fantastic. Um, so, see how that is? Kenny? Ken. Ken. Yes. Just K E N. Right. So, um, what kind of work, work have you, what kind of work have you been doing, Ken? I've done a lot of auto sales for many years. Auto sales. Who don't know? I mean, what kind of cars have you been? I mean, come on. You don't know what the question to ask him next. What kind of cars have you been selling? Name one. Kia. No. <laughs> but, 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 but. Hyundai, yes. <laughs> Maybach. <laughs> you should mess with them, dude. These people, right. people are fun, man. They're easy and so predictable. You know, it's just, I mean, here's what you say to tall people. Does the people ever ask you that, how's the weather up there? Don't that just make you mad? <laughs> Don't ask them, how's the weather up there? <laughs> that is not a good idea. No. <laughs> no. Better than it. down there. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's just people are easy. Just play with them. Have a good time with them. Right. Um, ask questions about them, and they'll keep talking. You, you'll talk to people, and they will not shut up. And you'll be like, what am I doing here? 
you know, and it's like I'm trying to recruit them and they won't shut up. But the, the, right. the, the more they talk, the more they like you. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah? Absolutely. All right, Ken. Car salesman. How about um, Mortz? What kind of work have you been doing? Uh, IT work. Uh, I'm a uh, salesman for IT. I've been in the automobile business as well. Okay. So. Do you actually, um, what do you call it, program? Do you actually code? No, no, I, I sell the platform. Sold yes, platform. yes. My biggest thing, too, is understanding people. Like, do you, what kind of work? Are you construction? Were you the supervisor? Did you carry um, shingles up on your shoulder, up on the ladder? Did you have a crew of 10? Did you have two crews? Do you know how to build a corner? Do you know how to do concrete? Do you know how to lay it? Do you know what's the biggest challenge you ever have in construction? Is construction booming in this area? Just a million questions you can ask people, and just it's the questioning game with people you just met. If you've had, if you hadn't done a question game, you need to get with somebody. So what's this questioning game? But um, okay, all right, Armante, yes, Hannah, nice to meet y'all. Y'all can grab a seat. Give them a hand. Okay. Who you meet, how you meet, does that help a little bit? Yeah. Just questions, please kill it. How to get someone moving. I, I get this all the time. I got this guy, he's got about, I don't know, 27 people he's recruited and nobody will do anything. So I said, I'm going to do something on the show about getting people moving. Um, most of the time people don't do something because it's too complex what you want them to do. So what you have to do is make it smaller and simple so they can figure it out. And don't say it's simple, they should figure it out. You've got to make it smaller, break it down, keep it simple. The easiest thing that I can get people to do is watch the TWC, listen to the activity call, listen to the audios um, on, um, mm, on podcast. I go to podcast. I talk to people that somebody's been working with them, trying to get them to do something, Hannah. And I pull out their phone, I go, do you know we're podcasting? And they go, no. And I show them, I said, that purple button right there, the podcast button. And they go, I didn't know y'all have a podcast. I'm like, your manager has probably been trying to get you to do something complicated. See the little purple button? I don't know what it's like on uh, um, Androids, but it's just a purple button. See the purple button? That one right there. See? That one? Mm -hmm. So I show them that, and I hit on it, and then I say, all right, um, and I show them the, the podcast, move, and I say, just click on that. You ought to listen to Biggers. So see how easy that is? Take out your phone. If you hadn't done it, y'all should go there. That's, see, I can get people to do stuff because I get people to do littler stuff. But I get complex over time. Does that make sense? I'm just such a tiny person, okay? Can you watch the TWC? Hey, have you read any of this book right here where I pull out an Ogmandino book or another book and I say, could you re just read a couple pages tonight? Tonight, read a couple pages. I'm just a simple, simple person. I read this one time, or no, I was watching television. I learned a lot from television, Armante. Um, the way they train whales is like if this was a, if this was a, a, a swimming pool and, a, or, and the whale was in it, or whatever you call them, what the whale's in, a tank. I would draw a line on the bottom, and then you just put a fish on this side, and they go eat it, and then they put a fish on this side, and they go eat it. You just get them going back and forth. Does that make sense? And then you lift the rope up a little bit, and they have to either run through the rope. If they run through the rope, you don't give it to them. You put it back. If they go over the rope, you give them a fish. Does that make sense? And you just keep going up and up, and eventually you put the rope out of the water, and they figure out the only way they're going to give me a fish is if I go over the water. Does that make sense? And then people say, like, are you training me? I'm training you to be rich. Yes. The whale jumps over the rope. I'm training you to be rich. I was trained. I trained myself how to do this. I'm going to try to. So it's usually too complex what you're asking people to do. If your fish can't figure out how to swim back and forth across to get a fish, like if your whale is not that smart, you need to get another whale. Does that make sense? If, it's, if you made it that simple, that he, he won't look to TWC and he won't listen to a podcast, you have a dumb whale, okay? You have a whale that don't want to get to eat. Does that make sense? But if you're trying to get them to sell, that's a whole different kind. It's more complex. Um, meetings, audios, books. 
The other thing is fast. When you get a person in the beginning, come to my house. Like if you, if you, if you, if a person is fired up today, and they, and you, let's see, what's today? Uh, Wednesday. And your meetings are on Tuesdays. So your meeting's next Tuesday. I wouldn't say, let's come Tuesday and see if you like it. I would say, what are you doing tonight? Let's get you in class. Or I'm going to make some sales tonight. You want to ride with me? You with me? Like I would be on them right then. Get them in class. Send them an audio. And the way I do these audios, I don't, I, I would just, I just go to it like this. I click on it. And then I click on the little yellow, the little lines, and I hit the forward it to them, and I'll text it to them like that, and I'll just text it to them. I'll go, you should listen to this. And when they click on it, it goes right to the podcast. Does that make sense? Like I'm not, you'd be surprised how simple I am to work with. Now, I'm demanding, like, listen to this. It's going to be really good. You know what I mean? And tell me what you think about it. And then the next day, or even two hours later, I'll text you back and say, hey, did you like it? I ain't had time. Could you please watch it tonight? It's just, it's a matter of getting people moving. Remember that was how to get people to move. I get them to do little stuff, and that'll lead to them doing more. Okay? Uh, because this is an hour of information that's usually motivational, whoever it is. If it's Mike Levantovich or it's Brant Swindell, if it's Andy Riddle, or if it's Diane Lampy, it's going to be exciting, and it, it kind of gets them going. Whereas, I'm, I, instead of me hammering on them, I, I hammer them like from left field. Okay? And then if you give them the greatest salesman in the world or the eight steps to success, and they start reading it, and they they they... they, they let me, let me just tell you this. Here's, 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 if you have kids, they're going to date whoever they hang around. And whoever they hang around, they're going to get engaged to. And whoever they get engaged to, they're going to marry. And whoever they marry, they're going to have babies. And it ain't necessarily in that order. Does that make sense? So you get them dating this. Does that make sense? You get them dating the books. You get them hang around them, that's who they're going to marry. But they're not going to marry until they hang around. Does that make sense? So this is, this is, this is the way you flirt them into it. Does that make sense? Yeah. I've been doing stuff a long time, bud. All right. The longer they wait, it's like putting weight on their shoulders. Now, they go to the hot spot on Thursday, Friday morning, let's make phone calls. Friday morning, if they're already licensed, Friday morning, let's recruit your friends. Every day you wait, your odds go down and less and less. Urgency and speed. Okay, so the, if it's been a week and you hadn't talked, I feel like I talk to my person at least every week. I was like, when I get a person started, fired up out of mind, I'll talk to them three times a day. Who said, well, I don't want to drive them crazy. No, 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 no. Not the people that are not interested. I'm saying the people that are interested, full speed ahead. The people that are not interested, you're patient with. Does that make sense? It's like you, but but you, if they're ready, if I talk to a person that you've been talking to and they're ready, and they're, oh, I'm waiting on him to give me leads, or I'm waiting on him to tell me this, I'm like, oh, my God. Now, 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 now. Okay? All right. Ah. Uh, hmm. All right. When you are working with a person, you want to appear patient. So this is you, and this is a person right here, this is a person right here, and this is a person, and this is a person, and this is a person. So I'm telling this person what I'm to do, and, and I explain it to them, and they don't do it, I, I, just go, I just go, okay, over here, and then over here, and then over here. I'm, I'm not patient, I just seem patient to you. Does that make sense? I'm looking for a person who is going to respond when I say them, when I ask them to do stuff. All you can do for people is provide an opportunity and set an example. And what I'm like is, is this person starts, if this person becomes a star, then I will tell these people about it. I will tell them about it. If I get a paycheck, I'm going to tell these people about my paycheck. 
set example and give them an opportunity. Set an example and give them an opportunity. Don't beat them up, but set an example. That's why you got to go. I tell people all the time, you get a paycheck. Um, Lixie sent me or posted on band a picture of her paycheck. You, she had like 4,000 deposited in one day. It's cut a paycheck and send them their paycheck. Send them your paycheck. Show them examples all the time. Here's the apps I wrote. Here's what he did. So it's just people need examples more than anything, more than they need instruction. I always used to do that at NC State. I was like, could you just give me an example? Because they'd be talky. They'd be talky, 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 talky. And i go, just give me an example. Just draw it up. Draw me an example with, with, with fractions. Show me with whole numbers. Show me with decimals. Just show me how it works. Just give me about 10 different examples and I got this. I can copy an example, but it's hard for me to understand what you're saying when they start talking math. I mean, don't talk math, show me math. Okay. Oh, page 90. Yeah, page 90. On, I'm talking about uh, ready, go. Why is it hard to get a person to move when they first get started? That's what's on page 90. And um, people wanting to be perfect. I haven't here. Our business has been built with imperfect people doing imperfect things since 2002. So I, I, like, I know I'm a disaster, and I know you think you're a disaster. That's not a problem. I just need for you to do this, okay? Armante, you've got to be thinking. How is it? I'm, when I was your age, and I was succeeding in business, I would look around and I go like, there must be something messed up with these people because I'm terrible and I'm succeeding. Does that make sense? The only difference is, I don't know if somebody's convinced you that you can just do it, but I got to hanging around rich people who convinced me. They said, Andy, we don't care how normal you are. And like, I'm a st I call myself a standard white boy, right? I'm five foot 10 and three quarters, right? I ain't even five foot 11. <laughs> I can get away and call myself five 11 if I got shoes on. But I'm five, five foot ten and three quarters, and I can jump enough that I can grab hold of the rim, just barely grab hold of the rim, but I can't hold on to it. You know what I'm saying? Just, just standard. I can throw a ball about, I, I used to could throw it about 79 or 80 miles per hour, which is pretty weak. But it's pretty impressive if you're only on, if you're playing second base and first base is right there. Just shortstop and third, it was a problem. <laughs> I'd throw it kind of higher. <laughs> you can't throw it on a rope. I kind of thought to get a little height on that thing, you know? Is that, you understand? Like yeah. standard. You know, my dad was a postman. My dad wasn't an unemployed veteran with his legs blowed off. He wasn't this. He wasn't that. Nothing special about us. Just a, you know, went into the military and got a postman job. Mom's second. Just standard. Standard. What's your problem? That was my problem. There was nothing there. Imperfect people, imperfect things. So I'm just sell, I'm selling right out of the book. And there's this long story in here that's pretty cool about Jimmy Buffett. Be patient with people, but work with those you believe are willing to do what others are not. Work with those who are willing to do what others won't. That's right. So this is a great story in there. I'm not going to get into the Jimmy Buffett story, but it's really cool about how it took him forever. So you've got to be patient with people. All right. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people deal with bull crap in their head. We call it the chatterbox. You talking to yourself. I, I, I don't want to, me, I don't want to mess people up and think they got to read a book before they get smart. I, so I just tell them, I got, you need to quit listening to that stupid talk and you need to talk, do neg positive talk. But I've read this book. It's a great book. It's called Crash the Chatterbox and it's by Furtick. Kind of cool that you're from Charlotte and you know who he is and I'm sitting here. And this, this is marked up too, but I got all kinds of stuff marked up in there. Um, but he's talking about crashing that talky, talky, talky. Here, here's something for you. People don't believe what, they t what you tell them. People don't believe what you tell them. People rarely believe what you show them. They often believe their friends, and they will always believe what they tell themselves. So if I can get you telling yourself what I want you to say to yourself, like what to say to yourself, I know you'll believe it. Now, if I become your friend, you rarely believe me, but you might. 
Does that make sense? Um, so if you can be their friend and set the example, show them. People, people rarely believe what you show them. They often believe their friends. This is by Jim Rohn. This is what Jim Rohn said these four things. But if they rarely believe what you show them, I'd show them over and over again, but they might believe it. They believe their friends often, so become their friend and tell them. And then the last thing is they always believe with themselves. So work with them on self-talk. Here's the way self-talk is. It can't be negative. Like, you can do this. You got a shot. Ah! All right. So, um, I, you know, people, we had a guy that um, from Utah was telling me that his whole life changed at our convention because of this. God says, I am his masterpiece. I am his workmanship. I am established. I am sealed in his promise. I am redeemed. So if you tell a person, say, look, I'm not trying to tell you anything religious, but if you believe there's a God, God says you can do it. God says you're creating his image. So if I go around saying I'm created in God's image, then I have a better shot at succeeding because I believe what I'm saying. So you're allowed to tell people, you're allowed to tell people that this is true. Does that make sense? Y'all can tell them what God said. People say, well, I ain't a preacher. I'm not either. I'm, I mean, you ought to be able to figure it out. But I can say that God said that, okay? So I, what I do is I tell people books to solve their problem, and then I tell them, like, I just, I depend on God. Like, I can't do anything. Like, I know I'm a disaster, but God said that I'm creating His image, and God said I'm going to win, and so now I, I just work on that. And you can work on that, too. There was this little old lady that Sheila talk about that all the time. She said, God saved me. God did this, and God, and so she had an atheist live beside her. And he would always give her hell, you know. I don't know if an atheist can give you hell, but you know what I'm saying. Because they don't believe in God, I don't know if they believe in hell. But he was, you know, making fun of her. And a um, little lady, she went to church one day, and the preacher was talking about give, you know, have faith. And she gave her last $20 bill, and she said, I'm just going to go on the faith of God. And so um, the atheist found out about it. And uh, she said she didn't even have enough money to eat. And so the atheist found out about it, so he said, hey, I'm going to get her. So what he did is he got a big, nice bag of groceries, just all kinds of good stuff, put it on her doorstep and rung the doorbell. And she come out and she looked around, wasn't nobody out there because the atheist didn't run away. And she said, God did it! God did it! God did it! She just started screaming, God did it! She just broke it in a dance. God did it! God did it! And the atheist thought he messed her up because God can't put a grocery bag, so, you know, she's going to have to say, man, help me, right? She said, God did it. God did it. God did it. The atheist, he couldn't take it no more. He come out, he said, hey, God didn't do it. She said, yes, he did. He said, I did it. She said, God did it. He said, I bought it. God didn't do it. She said, God did it. He said, you can't keep saying God did it. Here's a receipt. She said, God did it, and he made the devil pay for it. He had the receipt. Here's, here's the bad signs. When people say it's, take it personal, when they say, um, it's, it's, I'm an idiot, um, I, I can't do it. You don't understand my situation. My situation. It's the three P's of disaster. It's the three P's of de depression. Per, um, personal, permanent, and pervasive. Personal is I'm terrible. My my situation pervasive is I can't do nothing right. My wife, my kids, my environment, my job, my pervasive. One freaking problem pervades, and then it won't never get better. But Tim Goad said something to me the other day that made me feel good. I was telling him about one of my problems that I was trying to make permanent, 
And he said, well, I just believe it, it might get better. And I was like, oh, hell. <laughs> you know, if it might get better, i got to keep trying now. But you see what I'm saying? That permanence is a problem. So the three P's, if you're making it personal, like, like your situation, or it's pervading into other problems in your mind, or if it's permanent, um, that, that's, that you're getting ready to get depressed. You've got to get out of that. Um, so I ought to be able to tell you a solution for that. Um, okay, here's the solution. Never jack anything up. Always be perfect. Um, <laughs> Here's what Paul said. This is this guy in the Bible. He said, Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I'm the worst. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm with him. <laughs> if, if thinking bad stuff is a problem, then I'm the worst. You know what I'm saying? Just, I, it's, there's, it's in other words, you want solutions to be perfect, and the other person, the other solution to me is very, it's actually two other solutions. One is you could just say Jesus, right? Or you could just say God. Or you could do this. Everybody messes up and then try again. So there's your three options. Be perfect, count on God, or just get up and do it again. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, God did it. Made the devil pay for it. All right, um, so personal, per pervasive, and permanent, and your solution is be perfect or count on God like the little old lady. And, and go, see, you know, he, the atheist is saying he don't re he's not real, you're making it up. But look, let me, let me explain something to you. Either way, she got groceries. Does that make sense? Either way, she got groceries. And you can say she won. That's what I'm trying to tell you is, you can do the Jesus thing, or you can, you can just get up and do it again. That, there's your choices. Um, I, I, did, I did read another story this morning about a um, little town in, in, in Germany that had a, a statue of Jesus, and every time it was bombing, people were praying, and they were saying, Jesus, protect me, and he got his hands blown off of Jesus. And um, they said, we ought to get a new statue. And they said, no, let's be the hands. I was like, ah, that's good right there. In other words, you know, you, you say Jesus did it, but then you go to work. You, you be the feet. You get, you get the moving. Okay, all right. Um, three things that um, problems you're going to have. You're going to have considerations, fears, and roadblocks. Considerations are thoughts. What's my wife going to think? What am I going to do about the dogs? What's my mama going to think? What's my neighbors going to think? What am I going to It's thoughts. Considerations. The other thing is fears. Fears are just feelings. I'm scared. I'm worried. I'm wondering. And the other one is obstacles, is roadblocks, which is just obstacles. So here's what I'm telling y'all. Every single thing, thoughts, feelings, or obstacles are expected. Okay? Not a shock. Your job is to get over the feelings and the obstacles and the thoughts. <laughs> what you going to do now? <laughs> you, you understand that you, that messes you up right there. Because that's all you got is your feelings and your thoughts and the problems. Your job is to deal with those three things. That's it. It's called a process. And you're allowed to call for a helpline. You've got President's Club, That's you've right. got your upline, you've got your agency marriage, you got me, you've got to call for help. That's right. You've got to ask, how do I get over this feeling that I'm having? Yes. How, this thought that I'm having, this roadblock that I'm having, how do I get around it? This is, ah, it's fired up. It's all a pro this is the process of becoming wealthy with us. This is the process of life. Yes. You're going to have bad thoughts. I have mentors around me, and they say things to me like, I just feel like it could get better. <laughs> I don't know how y'all feel about that stuff, but how about if I just looked at you and you told me your deepest, darkest, hardest problem you're dealing with, and I said, I just feel like it could get better. <laughs> well, what you going to say then? You're like, well, it's not. <laughs> well, it ain't so far. You know what I mean? Well, it might. 
<laughs> you know, you start remembering a movie where it looked like it was going to be bad and then it got turned around, you know, and you start thinking, my life could be a movie. <laughs> but I'm in the bad part of the movie right now. <laughs> oh, shoot. Up in him. Thoughts, feelings, obstacles. This is the stuff that you have to deal with. <laughs> Thoughts, feelings, obstacles. Hey, you like that spelling? Okay. You have to learn how to deal with this. Does that make sense? Look, you have to become aware, aware of these things. You have to face these things as real. You have to figure out the process, the process to deal with them. How about that? The end result is over here. I want residual income. I want respect. I want to be able to write checks. I want to make a difference. I want to be on the team. I want to be a part. That's the end. Here's you. There's what you face. You have to face it. Yes, there's a process. What's the process, Andy? Well, that's, that's what you got to learn. The first process is don't quit. Listen to this. You want to set a goal you want to set a goal big enough that the process of achieving it, the process of achieving it, you become someone worth becoming. Does that make sense? So if this is a tiny, tiny, tiny deal, and you become nothing because you got a tiny result, you ain't become nothing. It's not what you get, it's what you become. Does that make sense to you? It didn't make sense to me until I heard it about 10,000 times. It's not what you get, it's what you become. And the process that you've got to go through in this business gives you an opportunity to become somebody worth becoming. And depending on how big you set your goal, brother, you got some more. It's, it's crazy. That's, would, you go work, would you go through it again, Andy? Yeah, I wouldn't have become who I am. I wouldn't get what I got. I wouldn't know who I know. I wouldn't be able to help who I help. And my intentions are to help as many people as I possibly can before I die. Mike and Noel Levintovich are on a month-long trip with their entire, all their kids, first class, a month off of work. A month. And they're, in, they're over there in Poland and they're going to the city today where Schindler's List, where that existed. And Schindler's List, where that guy saved as many Jewish people as he could possibly save. All he did his whole life was making a difference in people's lives. And he said, if there was one thing you could wish for, I wish I could have helped change one more life. And that's where they are. And I know them. And me and Alex Abian and Jenny Abian and, and Jane Albright have had a peace I have a little piece in them getting to do that. One more person, baby, that we can help. Got it? Hope this has helped you. Let's go kill this thing. The alliance is on fire. Love y'all.